So I went on a round of antibiotics a couple weeks ago, right? And it absolutely made me feel terrible. I know how hard it is to replenish that good gut bacteria and get things back in order. And I started thinking to myself, okay, I do all these research topics, I do all these videos, I have to know a way to get my gut bacteria back up to snuff quickly. And I started thinking about it. I was like, coconut oil, here we go. Now you're probably asking yourself, how the heck does coconut oil work when it comes to replenishing gut bacteria? Well, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I wanna explain a couple of things before I explain how coconut oil and lauric acid, one of the components of coconut oil, can literally be something that can make you feel quite a bit better and get the most out of your day. So lauric acid is a fatty acid chain. It's a straight chain fatty acid, and about 50% of coconut oil is lauric acid. And in fact, a lot of other saturated fats contain lauric acid, but coconut oil has the highest quantity of lauric acid of any of those saturated fats. And what ends up happening is when you consume that lauric acid, your body converts it into something called monolaurin. Now that monolaurin has insane antifungal, antimicrobial, antiviral, antibacterial properties. And I'm gonna talk about how exactly it works and I'm gonna to touch on some of the research so I can back this stuff up with what I'm telling you. The first one I wanna look at is related directly to the antibiotics. Now I'm not a doctor, I'm not telling you to go eat a bunch of coconut oil in lieu of that erythromycin that they actually prescribed you. I'm not telling you that at all. But I'm telling you there are some serious, serious benefits. One study, took 30 different chains, 30 different fatty acid chains, and they studied their ability to fight bacteria. Well, what was found was that monolaurin, basically derived from lauric acid, was the clear winner of all those fatty acid chains, nine of which were saturated fats. So clearly showing that of all the fats out there, monolaurin has significant antibacterial properties. Even going so far as saying that lauric acid and monolaurin has the ability to kill Staphylococcus, different strains of Staph. Now, I don't know how much reading you do, but Staph is one of the leading killers in hospitals. When we get infections, things like that. Not saying that you can rub a little bit of coconut oil on anything and it'll fix it, but still, as a preventative measure, something you may want to take into your life. Okay, now the other one we want to look at is using coconut oil on your skin. Okay, coconut oil, again, has those heavy antimicrobial properties coming from that lauric acid. When you put it on your skin, it's been shown in studies that it actually can kill off something called P. acnes. Now that P. acnes is one of the bacterial strains that causes cystic acne. Again, it can't be a replacement for Accutane, it can't be a replacement for a prescription, but it's showing to be 15 times more powerful than benzyl peroxide. That's the kind of acid that you get out of a wash that you would normally put on your face to kind of dry it out and kill off some of the acne. Yes, 15 times more powerful. Again, whether you have acne or not, it just shows the ability for these healthy fats to fight that bad bacteria within our bodies. I don't wanna dive into a lot of science with monolaurin right now, because to be honest, it's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of where the research has gone with it. But what is really interesting is finding out why it is concluded that monolaurin seems to inhibit the growth of bad bacteria or gram-positive bacteria. And a lot of it has to do with a signal transduction interruption with the cell. In human terms, that basically means that it interrupts the signal from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. It disrupts that. So if you have gram-positive bacteria that's proliferating and growing, and suddenly you disrupt that communication between the outside and the inside, it makes it hard for it to reproduce because it doesn't really know what's surrounding it. It's disrupted that transduction. That is how it works from an antibacterial standpoint. Now I hope that you're still with me because now I'm gonna get to the good stuff, all right? The Journal of Medicinal Food found that lauric acid and monolaurin was extremely effective at killing off multiple strains of fungal candida. Candida is a huge, huge issue that a lot of us are suffering with. It's an overabundance of the bad bacteria coming up into the upper GI, making it so we feel bloated, making it so we feel nauseous, making it so we get acid reflux. Okay, this is showing some serious promising signs there. When we have an overabundance of the bad bacteria in our gut, it can dictate how we feel. That enteric brain, the ability of our gut to communicate with our brain is so intense, is now being linked to depression, to anxiety, to other mood disorders. If we can get a grasp on fighting off the gram-positive bacteria that shouldn't be there, we can make leaps and bounds in many different aspects of science, research, and medicine. Now, in addition to helping out the good bacteria within your gut, just an extra bonus, there's been some recent studies testing monolaurin and its effect on viruses. One specific test, testing HIV patients, and it actually lowered the viral count of HIV. 
It's not a cure, it's nothing like that, but it shows the potency of monolaurin to be able to fight viruses as well. So next time you get a cold or a flu, it may not be a bad idea to have a couple tablespoons of coconut oil just to try to get your system back in balance. One of the things I don't do in my videos a lot is give solid examples. And I wanted to make sure that I did give some examples because I think it's important that you know how to put this into place. I don't expect you to just eat a tablespoon of coconut oil all the time. But I do think that you should try experimenting with putting it on your skin. You see, a lot of times we absorb things through our skin even more so than we do through our digestive systems. So try rubbing just maybe a quarter tablespoon or so on your face and then washing it off in the morning. Maybe leave it on for just a minute or two. But additionally, start doing your cooking with coconut oil. And I know I tout this all the time, but really give it a shot. If you're cooking eggs, cook them in some coconut oil. If you're cooking chicken, cook them in some coconut oil. If you're using a salad dressing, melt it down and use that coconut oil. Because now it is being shown that actual serum lipid levels are decreased dramatically when you incorporate the saturated fats from coconut oil compared to other saturated fats and even compared to other polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats. We're talking about the viscous oils, the oils that are actually more liquidy. So lo and behold, a saturated fat is actually improving serum lipid levels. And I guess I can back that up with the fact that there are some countries that actually consume about 60% of their overall calories from coconut. We're talking about coconut cream, we're talking about coconut oil, we're talking about all kinds of different coconut butters, coconut as a means of cooking, coconut as a means of just eating the fruit itself. And guess what? They have some of the lowest instances of heart disease and disease in general in the entire planet. So let this be a lesson to incorporate coconut oil to get those antimicrobial properties, but more importantly, if you're trying to regulate your gut bacteria to increase your nutrient absorption and just to flat out feel better and lift your mood, I highly, highly encourage you to try some coconut oil. As always, keep it locked in here in my videos, and if you have any questions or anything that you want to hear about in a video, let me know in the comments below, and I'll be sure to take them all into consideration. See you soon. Thanks for watching.